Hi friends, I'm Dr. Munir Jan, anesthesiologist and intensivist. Today in this slide video presentation, I will be discussing what are basics of ventilator. In that, I will be discussing what is trigger, what is assist breath, what is control breath and what is assist control breath. So let's begin. <music> So basics of ventilator in this slide video presentation i will be discussing what is trigger what is assist breath what is control breath and what is assist control breath so these are the things where i will be focusing so let us begin with slide one now first of all the definition of ventilator ventilator is a machine that delivers a flow of gas for a certain amount of time by increasing proximal airway pressure a process which culminates in a delivered tidal volume so basically what is happening there is increase in the proximal airway pressure now with this increase in the proximal airway pressure there is flow of gas for a certain amount of time and that culminates into the tidal volume so what we are discussing here is the positive pressure ventilation so all the ventilators which we use nowadays they are based on positive pressure ventilation okay so in positive pressure ventilation just an overview of positive pressure ventilation ventilator increases the proximal airway pressure with this increase in the proximal airway pressure there is air flow into the lungs with this air flow into the lungs, there is increase in the alveolar pressure. With increase in the alveolar pressure, there is increase in the transpulmonary pressure. Now, what is transpulmonary pressure? It is the difference between alveolar pressure minus pleural pressure. Now, with this increase in the transpulmonary pressure, ultimately it results into increase in the lung volume. So, now the anatomy of the breath now breathing is a periodic event it composed of uh, repeated cycles of inspiration and expiration now each breath defined as one cycle of inspiration followed by expiration which can be broken down into four components and these four components they are known as the phase variables now what are these phase variables first is trigger second is target third is cycle and the fourth is the proximal airway pressure during expiration that is what is known as the baseline okay now in this as i said i will be discussing trigger and if you understand what is trigger it will be very easy to understand what is assist breath what is control breath what is assist control breath now trigger if we define trigger what does it mean the trigger variable determines when to initiate the inspiration breaths can be either ventilator trigger or it can be patient trigger okay so ventilator trigger or patient trigger breath can be there now ventilator triggered breath use time as the trigger variable now with time triggering the ventilator initiates a breath after a set amount of time has elapsed since the initiation of previous breath the most common manner to set the time trigger is by setting the respiratory rate the trigger variable determines when expiration and inspiration begins so this is responsible trigger variable when expiration ends and inspiration begins now for example if we have set the respiratory rate uh, in the ventilator 12 breaths per minute that is equivalent to setting the time trigger to five seconds because one breath every five seconds will result in 12 breaths per minute now when a breath is initiated by time trigger that breath is classified as ventilator trigger or that's what we know as control breath so the ventilator is delivering the breath if we have for example set the trigger if we have set the respiratory rate 12 that means 
after every 5 seconds ventilator is going to deliver the breath and these breaths that are initiated by time trigger are classified as ventilator trigger or control breath talking about patient trigger either it could be pressure dependent or it could be flow dependent now pressure dependent as we know when the patient has inspiratory efforts there is generation of negative pressure okay because of the contraction of diaphragm inspiratory muscles there is lowering of the pleural pressure and that ultimately decreases the proximal airway pressure and this airway pressure is transmitted along the tubings and measured by the ventilator now if this pressure that has been generated by the patient the reduction in this you know proximal airway pressure as measured by the ventilator if it is greater than the set pressure trigger a breath will be initiated and delivered by the ventilator this picture there is no uh, respiratory efforts or there is no patient efforts you can see the pressure in the inspiratory limb expir expiratory limb they are same okay they are zero zero and in the patient there is no generation of negative pressure so there is no decrease in the proximal airway pressure okay now in the second figure there are there is patient efforts now with this patient effort what will happen there is generation of there is generation of negative pressure so there will be decrease in the proximal airway pressure that will be transmitted to the ventilator now if this decrease in this uh, proximal airway pressure is more than what you have set the trigger for example if i set the trigger to minus 3 cm of water now if the patient is generating minus 3.1 cm of water pressure or there is decrease in my the in the pressure more than this uh, if the uh, if it is more than minus 3.1 then ventilator is going to deliver the breath so this is what is known as the pressure tri triggering now second is flow and is flow dependent now in this flow dependent changes in flow in the circuit as a result of patient's respiratory effort are detected by ventilator so in the pressure there was pressure change that was detected by the ventilator now in the flow the flow change will be detected by the ventilator so so for flow triggering a continuous amount of gas flows from inspiratory limb of the ventilator to the expiratory limb of the ventilator during expiratory phase this flow is continuously measured by the ventilator now in absence of any inspiratory efforts the flow of gas leaving the ventilator through the inspiratory limb should be should be equal to the gas returning to the ventilator through the expiratory limb so there will be equal flow coming and going out from the patient now during if there are inspiratory efforts by the patient some flow will enter in the patient instead of returning to the ventilator some of the flow will go inside the lung and the ventilator will detect decreased flow in the expiratory limb okay you can see in this picture the flow that is 10 liter per minute in the inspiratory limb is going and the same amount of flow is coming through the expiratory limb when there are no patient efforts so air flow going inside is equal to coming outside now when the patient in the second picture you can see patient has efforts there are inspiratory efforts now flow that is going that is approximately you can see 10 liter per minutes are going now with the inspiratory efforts 3 liters are going inside the patient now this the amount of flow that is coming out will be 10 minus 3 that is equal to 7 liter per minute and this reduction in the flow is detected by the ventilator and if this deduction or if this reduction in the flow is more than what you have set in the trigger for example if i have set the trigger 3 liter per minute 
फ्लो ट्रिगर थ्री लीटर पर मिनट दैट मीन्स इफ ए पेशेंट इज टेकिंग थ्री पॉइंट वन लीटर पर मिनट वेंटिलेटर विल इनिशिएट द ब्रेथ वेंटिलेटर विल ट्रिगर द ब्रेथ ओके नाउ सिंपल असिस्ट ब्रेथ इज इक्वल टू पेशेंट ट्रिगर ब्रेथ ट्रिगर वेरिएबल फॉर असिस्ट ब्रेथ आइदर इट कुड बी प्रेशर और इट कुड बी फ्लो नाउ असिस्ट कंट्रोल वॉट इज असिस्ट कंट्रोल ए पेशेंट ट्रिगर दैट इज असिस्ट एंड द वेंटिलेटर ट्रिगर दैट इज वॉट वी हैव डिस्कस दैट इज कंट्रोल कैन बी कंबाइंड टू क्रिएट ए हाइब्रिड ट्रिगर मोड नोन एज असिस्ट कंट्रोल विद दिस हाइब्रिड ट्रिगर बोथ ए कंट्रोल रेस्पिरेटरी रेट दैट इज टाइम ट्रिगर एंड आइदर ए प्रेशर और flow trigger are set so this is the combination of both assist as well as control breath by assist you will set either flow or you will set pressure and by control you will set the respiratory rate now if an amount of time as set by the time trigger has elapsed without a patient triggering breath the ventilator will initiate a control breath okay so ventilator is going to initiate the breath if an amount of time has set by the ventilator time trigger has elapsed without patient triggering breath now however if the patient triggers the ventilator via the pressure or flow trigger prior to elapsing of time trigger the ventilator will initiate assist breath and time trigger clock will reset now it is important to note that there are no difference in the other characteristics of breath that is target cycle baseline that i will be discussing in my next video what are these so there are other characteristics are not affected okay there is no change in the other characteristics between a time trigger controlled breath and patient triggered assist breath so that is the reason if you understand the trigger you can understand what is assist what is control what is assist control breath so these are trigger will determine or the ventilate either it is a ventilator trigger or it is a patient trigger they will determine whether it is an assist breath control breath or assist control breath now assist and control only describes whether the breath was triggered by the patient or by the ventilator now key concept in short assist breath is patient trigger breath trigger variable for assist breath either pressure or it will be flow key now assist control combines two triggers that is patient triggered and ventilator trigger assist control refers only to the trigger not to other phase variables now additionally one can describe whether a delivered breath was a control or assist by examining the pressure curve on the ventilator screen now patient triggered assist breath will have a negative deflection on the pressure curve right before inspiration whereas time trigger control will not have so if there is a deflection you can see in this figure there is a clear downward deflection in the pressure tracing that means patient is having some inspiratory efforts that is the reason there is a downward deflection now if you can see in the pressure versus time graph if you have seen that there is a downward deflection that means that breath is assist breath now if you can see that if you have pressure time curve there is no downward deflection that means the breath is completely controlled breath okay
Now, as I said, a downward deflection of pressure tracing for patient trigger breath is reflective of patient's inspiratory efforts, resulting in reduction in proximal airway pressure. Inspiratory rate of ventilator will depend on the relationship between the time trigger control rate and the rate of inspiratory efforts by patient. Assuming that intrinsic breathing pattern of the patient is regular, I am repeating this, if the patient's breathing pattern is regular, if the time trigger is such, uh, set such that the control rate is 10 breath per minute, that means every 6 seconds the breath ventilator will be giving the breath and the rate of patient's inspiratory effort is 20 breath per minute. That means one breath every three seconds patient is going to trigger the breath. Then, then all the breaths will be assist breath because the patient is triggering the breath at three seconds. Now therefore the actual respiratory rate will be 20 breath per minute. In this case, increasing the control rate on the ventilator, if you increase from 10 to 15, still the time trigger, that is the ventilator time trigger, you have changed from four, 6 to 4 seconds. So, it will have no effect on the respiratory rate if the patient continues to trigger the ventilator every 3 seconds. For example, if you have a patient, you have set the respiratory rate 10 on the ventilator and there is a regular intrinsic respiratory pattern. And the intrinsic, that is the inspiratory efforts of the patient are 20 breaths per minute. That means the patient is triggering the breath every 3 seconds. And you have set the respiratory rate 10. That means the breath ventilator is giving every 6 seconds. But what you can see, the trigger is every 3 seconds, patient is triggering the breath, either with flow or pressure. So all the breaths, what you can see on the ventilator, they are assist breath. Okay. Now, if you increase the respiratory rate from 10 to 15, what will happen? You will only change the trigger from 6 to 4. So there will be no effect on the respiratory rate. But if you increase the respiratory rate from 10 to 20, so all the breaths now will be controlled breath. Because you have changed the time, that is the time trigger on the ventilator by increasing the respiratory rate from, you have changed it from 6 to Three. So, all the breaths will be now controlled breath. So, this is in case of the patient is having a regular intrinsic breathing pattern. Now, however, as I said, increasing the respiratory rate to about 20 breaths per minute, decreasing it will decrease the time trigger to 3 seconds and all the breaths will be controlled breath. That is time triggered controlled breath. Now, this time set trigger respiratory rate is essentially a backup. If the patient does not trigger the ventilator at a frequency higher than the backup rate, the ventilator will deliver time trigger control breath at the set backup respiratory rate. Now, most of the ventilator will display actual respiratory rate. Okay, you have respiratory, you have set the respiratory rate 10. But what you can, if the patient has an inspiratory efforts, there are some efforts, you can see the actual rate, what is the actual respiratory rate on the ventilator. Now, if the actual respiratory rate is higher than the time trigger controlled respiratory rate, there must be patient trigger assist breath. So what does it mean? Simply, if you have set the respiratory rate 10, now you can see on the ventilator 20. Okay, that means there is patient trigger assist breaths that are present there. Now for patients with irregular, now irregular breathing pat pattern where the time between the patient's inspiratory effort varies. So it will vary. So there you can have either assist breath or you can have control breath. 
because there is a variation in the time with there is a variation in the time trigger there is the variation in the patient trigger not the time trigger so it will vary in case of irregular breathing pattern there could be either it could be assist breath or it could be a control breath okay so in case of irregular breathing pattern either assist or control breath will be present now simply if you have to determine whether it is an assist breath or it's an control breath you can see the downward deflection on the pressure time curve if there is downward deflection in the pressure time time curve that breath is assist breath if there is no downward deflection in the uh, pressure time curve that means th that is the control breath this slide video presentation in my upcoming video i will be discussing about the other phase variables that is target cycle and uh, the baseline that is the proximal airway pressure during expiration so if you like this video please press the like button and subscribe to my channel you can follow me on the facebook you can follow me on instagram by the name dr.munir.jan thank you very much